everyone, Miss Meek here, and today we're going to talk about graphing ratio tables. So we talked about uh, ratio tables in quite a bit of detail in a previous video. Uh, so if you do not know what a ratio table is or don't remember how they work, um, go check out that video. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, if not, let's go ahead and continue and let's talk about uh, graphing some ratio tables. So first of all, a ratio table is a table full of equivalent ratios. So if we get a rate or we get a ratio, we can actually take that and form our own own ratio table by keeping everything equivalent, meaning that if I multiply or divide the top by a number, I just do the same thing to the bottom, and that's how I make those equivalent ratios. So in this problem, it says that there is one cup of water for every three cups of flour in a cookie recipe. It wants us to create a ratio table that shows how much of each item would be needed to make more batches of cookies, and then we're going to take that ratio table and we're going to put it in a graph. So first of all, let's identify our rate. Our rate is one cup of water for every three cups of flour. That means that I have water being compared to flour. Again, order matters when it talk when we're talking about ratios. That means that my water number is going to be first. And in terms of graphing, that means that my water number is going to be my x-axis. So if I really wanted to, I could label my x-axis down here water. And normally I'd write my label below the numbers, but I ran out of room. So bear with me. Sorry about that. Uh, my label is going to have to be on my x-axis right there. The second number there is for every cup of flour. So flowers is going, uh, flower cups here is going to be my y axis. So my y axis is going to be cups of flour. So it says one cup of water for every three cups of flour. So let's go ahead and start filling in this ratio table. So one cup of water three cups of flour. Now to put this on our graph, we're going to, again, water is going to represent my x's and flour is going to represent my y's. And so I'm going to rewrite these ratios as coordinates for my graph. So my first coordinate is going to be one. So that's over to the right one and then up three. So right there is my first coordinate. Let's go ahead and make some more coordinates here. So what if I had two cups of water? Well, one times two is two. So three times two would be six. Meaning if I had two cups of water, I would have six cups of flour. So my next point is going to be at 2, 6. So over 2 to the right and then up 6. So right there. And then let's just do one more point. All right. So 3. If I have 3 cups of water, that means I'm multiplying times 3. And so 3 times 3 is 9. So if I have 3 cups of water, that means I'm going to have th uh, 9 cups of flour. So my point is going to be 3, 9. So I'm going to go over to the right 3 and then up 9. So again, after I do all of that, I do want to connect my dots to make a line there. And I will put an arrow at the end of my line to show that if this ratio table kept going, if it had more ratios on it, that um, my line would continue to increase, uh, increase at the same rate. Every time I go up three or every time I go over one, I go up three. Every time I go over one, I go up three. You can actually see that right here. Every time I go over one, I go up three over one, up three. That is that rate, that ratio of one cup of water for every three cups of flour. All right, uh, this is how you graph ratio tables. Um, all you have to do is make sure you create an equivalent ratios in your table, and then you just put them on a graph. Um, I hope that this cleared up any confusion when it comes to graphing ratio tables. I will talk to you later. Bye.